Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting topics, but we are starting with Arlo Classic UK 2022 Classic Physique Division, which kind of had a very controversial ending, a lot of people didn't expect this to be the outcome, a lot of people had Wesley Visser's winning this show this division however he ended up in third as you can see on his sides you have michael the bull who won the show and christian zagarella who actually ended up in second pushing wesley all the way down to third and a lot of people didn't like this a lot of people in the audience were booing when wesley got that third spot so we're gonna go over this in a very good quality video and i'm gonna analyze pose for pose and let's see was this actually the right decision before we start, let's check out who actually this guy even is, Christian Zagarella, the guy that beat Wesley. As you can see, he is a great bodybuilder, and I'm saying bodybuilder for a reason. I'm not saying he's a great classic physique competitor, I'm saying he is a great bodybuilder because he does have more of a bodybuilding physique, a 212 kind of physique, much more than a classic physique. This does not look very classic to me. The guy looks amazing. He is a complete bodybuilder. He has great legs, great glutes, great back. He is massive. He is round. But he isn't exactly super classic, right? If you check out his profile, you will find a bunch of photos like this. He's doing most muscular, all kinds of variations of most muscular, which is not a classic physique pose. And also he's doing a front lat here, which is also not a classic physique pose. So this guy is a bodybuilder. Somehow he managed to squeeze into a classic physique weight cap. He, he made the weight and he looked great. He was well conditioned. He was very complete, very big, very round, massive, but not very classic. Let's check out this high quality video and let's see what actually happened here. By the way, all the way to the right, you have Laszlo Kirali, a Hungarian bodybuilder. This guy looked amazing, an amazing wee taper, great front double bicep. But I think his downfall was the coloring and the polish. He didn't have a lot of oil, a lot of glaze. And I think that's what cost him potentially being fourth. The coloring, it is very important. Now let's focus on the top three. So as you can see, the winner, Michael the Bull, looks great. The waist looks small. He's very conditioned. Not exactly super classic, but he looks good. Wesley, in this pose, he doesn't look that great, let's be honest. Like, his arms are looking amazing, those biceps are just freaky. But his waist doesn't look very small right here, no. And he didn't even do a vacuum. Also, his legs are not round, they are not super separated, they don't look that good. However, Zagarelli guy looks amazing in this pose, I gotta give it to him. He has a great vacuum, he has a great waist to shoulder to lats ratio, his legs are very separated, lean, he has a good flow, he's a shorter guy, but he looks very classic right here, and in my opinion, he wins this pose. But that's only one pose, let's move on to the next one. Now we're gonna have side chest pose. So again, let's focus on the top three. Michael the Bull, very conditioned, but kind of flattish in this pose. His chest was a little bit flat. I think it's because he tried to make the weight, so he didn't. He probably didn't carb up properly. He did something too aggressive, diuretics, I have no idea. But he kind of flattened out a little bit in the chest. But he was shredded, he was lean. Though in this pose, I would definitely go with Wesley, even though he isn't as conditioned as Michael, he has really thick arms, he has great shoulders, great chest, that he lifts up high, he does this pose the way Arnold used to do it, and from the sides you can see his thick waist, the other guy, Zagarelli, he does this pose like a bodybuilder, he, he squats way too low, he emphasizes his shoulders and his arms instead of his chest, he doesn't lift it high like, like Wesley, it's not very classic, I would definitely go with Wesley in this pose, also because of his coloring and polish, Wesley looks very conditioned in this one. Now they turn around, they show us their back, and here you will see how improved Wesley's back actually is this year. So as you can see, it is very, very wide, it's crazy wide. Uh, his glutes are definitely not, not quite in. They could definitely be sharper, but come on, guys. This is classic physique, this is not bodybuilding, it's not a glute competition. I don't want to focus on glutes too much. As you can see, Michael the Bull has peeled glutes and hamstrings too, but I don't feel like that should be so important in classic physique. I don't know what is exactly the criteria, I'm not a judge, but I would prefer it if it wasn't that important. As you can see, Zagarelli, 
he doesn't look that good. Like, he doesn't have crazy separation in his glutes or hamstrings. He is a little bit shorter, so he doesn't have that big frame. His lower back is not very tight. I don't like him in this pose. Even though I can't see his entire body, I think I can see enough. So as far as between Wesley and Michael, I don't know, man. Because of conditioning, I can see an argument for Michael winning because of his lower back, because of overall conditioning. But uh, if you talk about the shape, the structure you would go with Wesley. So I'm not so sure who wins this one. It's very close, if you ask me. But I definitely wouldn't go with Zagarelli. Look at Michael right here. What the hell happened here? He always has this kind of issue. I think it's because of crazy amount of diuretics when he tries to make the weight. He does something insane with electrolyte disbalance and he often looks like he's about to collapse on stage. And I think the judges should pay attention to that and not award that kind of posing. It looks clumsy. It doesn't look very professional. And it tells us that he's not very healthy on this stage. Anyways, now they do the abs and thighs. In IBB where I compete, in classic physique, we have a separate vacuum pose and abs and thighs pose. However, in NPC or the IBB Pro League, they don't have that. They just have an abs and thighs. And you can do vacuum if you feel like it, if you think it's a good uh, pose for you. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I think it's important to do it to show that you can do it. So, Wesley did the vacuum at the very end of this pose and I caught this very moment when all three of them did vacuum so as you can see Wesley again from the front he shows that pretty wide waist and also he shows that his legs are not very round they are not super separated he shows that lack of condition and also the v-taper could be better but look at Michael like he doesn't have much of a v-taper he looks pretty flat he's just more conditioned also his vacuum is not very deep so as far as Wesley versus Michael I'm not even sure be my guest you tell me maybe Michael let's say Michael but I have this guy Zagarelli beating both of these guys in this pose he has more of a sweep in the legs he has a deeper vacuum he has a smaller waist and his lats are popping more uh, compared to his waistline so I think he wins this pose even though he's a shorter guy and a smaller guy he doesn't have the stature like the other two he wins this pose but overall who was supposed to be first who was supposed to be second and third <sighs> i don't know we had a case of apples oranges and i don't know whatever lemons because we have three kind of different physiques one that is very conditioned not super classic but classic enough with a small waist which is michael the bull the other one is wesley Visers, who is not very conditioned but has arnold like physique who has very classic lines golden era type of physique and also you have Zagarelli in the middle more of a bodybuilder type with a great vacuum with crazy legs with crazy pop with crazy 3d and with good conditioning so it's really tough to determine a winner of this show when i saw a couple of photos of wesley and a couple of low quality videos i thought wesley deserves a victory because he looks the most classic here by far but if you do this kind of a deeper analysis, pose for pose, like we just did, you will notice the flaws that he has. So it's not that clear. I wouldn't be so sure about him being second or winning, but I wouldn't complain. And because of his crazy structure, crazy Arnold-like uh, golden era type of look, I think he should have been awarded, if not by winning, at least by being second. And while I was watching the pre-judging, I was pretty sure he's going to be at least second, if not first. So if I was a judge, it would be a hard decision, but I would go with Wesley for at least second. Now, whatever you guys think about the outcome of this show after you have seen this high quality video and you heard my analysis, whatever you think now, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys are looking for a high quality pre-workout with great ingredients and even better taste, there are so many different flavors of Old School Labs Vintage Blast. If you guys want a 15% discount, just use the code DIVAN and the link is down below. If you guys want to support me and my channel, this is a great way of doing it. Thank you guys. Now let's move on to the next story. It is about Andrew Jack, who just explained why he wasn't on at Arnold Classic UK. So basically Andrew Jack posted this video about our Classic UK on his YouTube channel and if you guys check the description of this video you could have seen his explanation 
to why he wasn't on exactly at this show. So he says, show day of the Iron Classic UK 2022. I didn't come in good as I wanted to, but I guess the reasons behind was even better. Why wanting to come in 100% when you can just bring same package and not stress the body too much so that we can go all in for the Mr. Olympia? That was the new plan. Also, processing Wiza time took longer than we expected and it caused some slacking in training but no excuses it is what it is blah 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 so basically what andrew had to say is that the goal his goal and the goal of his team was simply to bring the same thing that they brought to texas look at him here <laughs> look at this frontal ad spread uh -huh. i'm so amazed when i see this it's insane what a ridiculous bodybuilder, guys. So basically what he said is that his plan was originally to come in the same as Texas. So did he achieve that? Not really. He was definitely softer. If you're not so sure if you think he was probably the same, it was different lighting or whatever. No, no. Don't be wrong. Take a look at the glutes. Take a look at the hamstrings and his lower back. It was definitely not as hard. It was definitely smoother. It was softer. It was like 5 to 10% worse than Texas Pro. If you're still not convinced while watching this video, let me show you a nice comparison. It was posted by this Instagram page, Darkness Muscle Office. But let me zoom in right here. So if you take a look at this video, if you watch it, you will definitely, your eyes will be drawn definitely to the video on the right. Uh, the posing routine is a little bit different, but still, still you can see how much more impressive he was at Texas Pro. He was simply drier, he was fuller, he was harder, he was better. You can see it everywhere, in his chest, in his arms, even from behind. Look at the back, look at the thickness and that dryness, the hardness that he had all the way from the top to the bottom. He was definitely much, much better in Texas. I think it wasn't even like 5% difference, I think it was more. I think he was very good at Arnold because he is so genetically blessed, but the way he looked at Texas, it was just mind-blowing how insane he looked. He looked great at Arnold again, but <laughs> Texas was definitely a far better package. And the reason, once again, was first of all, it was the plan not to come in much better at UK because he already has a Mr. Olympia qualification and he wants to compete at the Mr. Olympia at his absolute best. And there was also that visa issue that kind of affected his training. I had to play this part in slow motion because this back lad spread looked so freaking insane so glorious he calls himself a mona lisa of bodybuilding and i see why i see why this this freaking back lat spread is definitely a piece of art so once again even though he wasn't 100 on he was still good enough to win this show to win this really good show i gotta say and again the reason why we haven't seen improved version of andrew was because he doesn't want to do that before the mr olympia he doesn't want to overtax his body there is no need to he was good enough to win like this and also that visa issue affected him when you talk about andrew jack you can't help but to think how well will he do at the mr olympia how well will he compare against the top dogs like for example william bonek who is bringing something that we probably haven't seen before or at least he's going to bring his best version that he maybe was in like let's say 2017 or 2019 where he was really good so this is definitely going to be a comeback year for William Bonek he already proved that to us at the Arnold Classic and then also at Boston Pro where he won he had one big critique it was his gyno that's why he didn't win the Arnold Classic Ohio which was definitely a tougher Arnold Classic than UK so he almost won that one the reason why he didn't win it was gyno so he fixed that gyno and he started working seriously hard and another thing is Chad Nichols his coach basically promised to us that he's bringing something he never brought before that we're about to see absolute best version of William Bonac and I believe that I definitely believe that based on what I saw so far all the physique updates it looks like William Bonac looks amazing and he's about to bring probably his best addition in his life that we ever saw so far and how well will that compare against 
somebody like Andrew Jack, who is much taller, he has a prettier structure, but he doesn't have that kind of density and muscularity like William Bonek. That's definitely going to be a very, very interesting comparison. Me personally, I feel like Andrew probably will be in that first call out. We will see him compared against the top guys. And I have William Bonek in my top five for sure, if not top three this year. But there is still a long time to go. There is a lot of great bodybuilders who are all improving. And I think it's going to be mainly about who picks the best, who brings the best combination of conditioning and fullness and at what percent of their max they come in. I don't think there will be a lot of room for, uh, for mistakes. I think the ones, the bodybuilders in, let's say, top 10 who bring their 100% game on, if they do that, they will be in that top 5. The others who are not at their absolute best will be out of that top 5 and will make that top 10. That's just what I think right now. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.